right, everybody, welcome to P2SK's、uh, screencast.、Uh, today, we're going to talk about pneumonia and pleural effusion, and we'd like to thank all the people that are joining us、uh, off site. This is、uh, an area that I'm really passionate about, and、uh, it's an area I feel like has maybe the most potential impact for kids. Uh, and point of care ultrasound. And I don't mean kids in the emergency department, I mean kids overall. Like, I think it's a fundamental disruptive change in how we can evaluate children with fever and cough. The whole reason that people、uh, bring stethoscopes into patient rooms in pediatrics,、um, I feel like, gets disrupted by、uh, knowing how to look for consolidations and look for effusions. <coughs> So, first of all, let's talk about like, the state of the evidence. And we're going to just give a shout out to this meta analysis. Lots of、uh, primary literature out there. I'd say there's probably 15 to 20、um, studies that have between 50 to 200 kids each that all tried to look at this question about, like, well, what's the accuracy of lung ultrasound for pneumonia? And I would caution you when we say that, that what we're really saying is the accuracy of a lung ultrasound for consolidation. Because keep in mind that pneumonia is a clinical rather than radiological diagnosis. It's the way we kind of synthesize all of our available history, physical. Uh, exam information with imaging information to say that I think that's what's happening in this kid is that they、uh, have an infection in their lung.、Um, and that, you know, the、uh, idea that imaging alone tells you that this is lung infection, well, you can have a, a lesion in lung imaging, have no fever, have no cough, and it may not be driven by infection. So let's keep that in mind, first of all. But I think the issue of、um, accuracy has been pretty much settled. There's always going to be some、uh, complaints that are gold standard that a lot of these studies have used. Chest x ray is not good enough of a gold standard. But some of these studies that have been quoted in this meta analysis did compare to CT. And chest x ray is what. Most of us would think of as a feasible and ethical kind of gold standard to use. And so, if we're going to use that as a gold standard, sprinkled with a little bit of CT here and there in the eight studies that make up this paper, the sensitivity and specificity、um, of、uh, POCUS are good. And then, when we begin to go to the next level of studies,、um, and you know, a, a lot of this pioneering work is done by this group out of Mount Sinai in New York,、uh, the Jim Sung group. And you start to look at, okay, well, let's say that we、uh, agree that it's an accurate test. And now we're going to say, what if we start to、um, substitute it for chest x ray?、Uh, Then, this was a big paper that came out in CHEST in July 2016 and says that if you start doing that,、uh, you can reduce your x ray use by around 40%,、uh, with a difference between like, how much novices reduce their x ray、uh, percentage and how much experienced users reduced it without missing pneumonias, without having a difference in unscheduled visits. With the caveat that, at least in this study, which had, I believe, around 200 patients in it, There was an increased antibiotic use in the point of care ultrasound group.、Um, and we can, I think, all think of reasons for that. We know that ultrasound detects smaller things、yeah. than x ray does. And then, work that we're doing here、uh, at the Hospital for Sick Children, this is led by one of our、um, pediatric emergency medicine fellows,、uh, Maya Harrell Sterling. She's done some really excellent work that we hope to have、uh, published soon. When you start to look at, okay, our ER houses、uh, basically two kinds of imaging flow patterns for patients coming to the eMERGE with suspected pneumonia. Depending on which staff you get, you might get a traditional approach that's a history physical exam and a decision、um, x ray. Or you might get a novel approach where the, there's a history and a physical exam that includes point of care ultrasound. So, when we compare、uh, the resource utilization between patients getting x ray and patients getting point of care ultrasound, we find that there's like pretty significant reduced length of stay. I mean, I thought when we did this that we might find 20 or 30 minute differences, but when we matched kids 
for a bunch of different markers on like their severity. We matched their CTAS score, we matched their age, their gender. Uh, we did some matching on things that would be markers of the institution's flow through abilities, like the time of day, the number of patients in the department. Even with all that matching to try to like eliminate differences between groups, uh, there's an 81 minute uh, reduction in ED length of stay if you use POCUS as opposed to X-ray. And we saved something around $200 uh, when you look at uh, hospital overhead in terms of paying for radiology services, paying um, for people to do uh, the X-rays and to read them. Uh, all of that cost came out in a favor of savings of around $191 when you use point of care ultrasound. So enough about the state of the literature. What are we talking about when we talk about lung ultrasound for pneumonia? Well, here's a pneumonia and I'll ask the fellows if they can point out some of the features they're seeing that uh, uh, tell them it's pneumonia, some of the anatomical features they see on the screen. So we've got Michelle saying uh, hepatization. And I'm going to use my cursor here to say we've got this solid looking material and we've got some branching white stuff in it. And this thing looks a lot like this thing. And yeah, Nir, I know you have the uh, laser pointer, but because we're screencasting it, we're going to use this cursor. What else do people see? All right, we've got these branching white tree-like structures that are air bronchograms. And no A-lines. Elimination of A-lines, excellent. And it's, it goes at least to the end of the screen, so it's at least, what, four centimeters? Yeah, I've got my four centimeter marker, my five centimeter down here, so it's like five centimeters deep, good. Did you call it a fluid bronchogram there? This, the, what yeah, was there for a second? I do think you see little bits of fluid bronchograms. I'll leave my cursor where I think you see one at the end of the clip. There, I agree. Yeah. And above it there for a second looking a lot like biliary tubules in the liver. And then the diaphragm is another giveaway that you've got something going on. Mm -hmm. Seeing that curved structure dive into the screen, you shouldn't be able to see the diaphragm inside the chest. Mm -hmm. You should only see it at the zone of apposition where it lies against the chest wall, unless something lets the beam access the diaphragm there. So are those Aha, uh -huh. we'll get to that. I think you see a little bit of bubbly yeah. movement, so... I would say probably dynamic. In other areas, I think they remain still. And this will be part of my rant on how I don't care about dynamic or static air bronchograms. And then again, fellows, maybe near, what do you see in this image? Chloral effusion. Okay, chloral effusion, perfect. So uh, we've got this dark triangular wedge going down to the costophrenic angle here. Again, we can see the diaphragm diving into the chest. What do you think about the lung that you see? Do you think that uh, from this view that this pleural effusion is driven by uh, consolidation? We do see the lines until some baby. So no, like no sign of like So in this view, no obvious uh, big pneumonia to drive this. Cool.